Mrs. Solis Requiem for Eli began life in about the year 2000 as a film score for an IMAX documentary about the sun called Solomax. The original idea for the piece was for it to be a, a secular mass to the sun, a kind of celebration of our nearest star. And several years after writing the score for this film, uh, I was invited by the Melbourne Symphony to develop it into a piece for live orchestra and chorus. And uh, at the beginning of 2008, I'd pretty much finished that process. In June 2008, um, a terrible tragedy befell our family. Um, my youngest son, Eli, was, uh, was killed. And um, I found it very difficult to work after that event. I shut the door of the studio and, and didn't return for about another year or so. When I did finally work up the courage to return, I walked into the studio and there on the desk was this score for this piece called Mrs. Solace, which I'd completely forgotten about. And I started looking through the pages and, um, and I saw one of the poems which I'd set to music. My joy is born every time I gaze at my beautiful sun, but my life dies when I cannot look at it, for the very sight is bliss to me. O sun, immortal life giver, do not hide, for I know that when I am unable to see you, life could not be worse. And I was struck by the, the similarities between the words sun, S-U-N, and my son, Eli, S-O-N. And so as I developed the piece over the next 18 months, it became a kind of daily dedication for me to the memory of my son. And in that sense, it became my own requiem. Nigel and I have known each other for a long, long time, ever since he was a student at the Conservatorium High School. After learning of the tragic death of Eli Westlake, sometime later, I called Nigel and Jan and invited them to a lunch. It was, I think, the first time they'd really been out in a, in a social circumstance, and I said, look, you know, you are an extraordinary composer, and I love Nigel's music. He's a wonderful, wonderful composer. And I said, Nigel, there is a, an opportunity here to write a requiem. And he said, well, I've been working on a mass called the Missa Solus, the Mass of the Sun. One thing led to another. We went up to Nigel's place, and I listened to Nigel play the mass from cover to cover. And I thought it was an extraordinary piece and let everybody know in the SSO and indeed the MSO and the like that this amazing work was around and let's program it. it, it it's an extraordinary piece, there's no question about it. It's a great experience which you don't often get. It's happened a few times throughout the, my time in the orchestra and each time it's always been extra special because you know the person who's conducting knows that music intimately of course and um, uh, it's almost like you're going to get the definitive version really. Um, but for me as a percussionist too it's really great to speak to be able to work with the composer because there are so many instruments involved, um, different sounds, and um, you can really clarify a lot of sort of uh, details directly with a composer, which you otherwise might be just taking a bit of a wild guess. In this particular case, we have a very large percussion ensemble section, which we play by ourselves, which is not common in a lot of, mu and a lot of music that we play. So um, it adds a, a different level of challenge for us, which is really fun. I know everybody in the section has been really looking forward to it, and, uh, and we really enjoy that, that moment in particular. But, but not just that moment. I, I mean, I'm particularly fond of Nigel's music, so I'm just enjoying the whole thing. Nigel Westlake to conduct the Sydney Symphony, Mrs. Solis, Requiem for Eli. I 
had to prepare myself emotionally for the performance um, because I knew it would be very easy to, to break down in the middle of it. But I'd, I wanted to be strong for the orchestra. I wanted them to have faith in the fact that I was going to be there for them and not, not crack under the circumstances. A standing ovation here in the Sydney Opera House Concert Hall for Nigel Westlake. At the end, to come back on stage and receive such incredible warmth and appreciation from the audience and the orchestra as well was, was a wonderful feeling. To know that the, the piece had somehow connected with people. It had hit an emotional sweet spot, if you like, and people had accepted it. Um, and I think we're quite moved by it. Uh, that was my impression anyway. It was a very positive experience and a great blessing to be able to share such a deep personal piece of music with so many people. To be able to have that opportunity has, has really helped me a, a lot emotionally, I think, um, coming to terms with, with the tragedy and just having that means of expression. They're quite quite unique in a way. And I'm just so thrilled that the Sydney Symphony have taken it on board and become part of, of this journey with me and, and my family. <laughs>